Dame Brakovich has been talking to another journo. Mm. Guess he doesn't trust you with his life story. Right, I can't understand why. This is WA's most ferocious looking underworld figure enjoying himself on Sunday afternoon at Perth's most ferociously bogan fun park. Muay Thai champion, basketball fan, Shields jewellery enthusiast, (laughs) current affairs thought leader, and fashion tragic. He's an angry, angry man. The one time Hell's Angels latest foray into the media was voluntary. Shared his life story and it's quite the page turner. I'm not the toughest I just always get up is how he describes his life philosophy. A lot of that life is straight out of the bikey playbook. Grows up in a tough area, which Belmont certainly was back in the 80s when Dane was a kid. Problematic relationship with his father, he hates him. Gets kicked out of school, that was Ursula Frayne Catholic College in East Vic Park. Falls in with the wrong crowd. In Dane's case, that was a bloke called Tristan Albury, one of Australia's great psychopaths. No comment. Get the off. That was Tristan talking to the Corruption and Crime Commission about a bikey fight at the Perth Motorplex 10 years ago. Dane has talked about his love-hate relationship with Aubrey. Apparently Tristan broke his nose in a fight at Belmont High in Year 12, but then avenged Brakovich's honour by bashing the bloke who shot up Dane's house in a drive-by in 2021. Not that Dane needs anyone to fight his face for him. <laughs> he talked down his Muay Thai career, but people who follow the sport say he was a genuinely good fighter, a proper athlete. Dane says he was... Always better on the street than in the ring, which he proved when he caught up with slain Rebels boss Nick Martin for an Aperol spritz in Scarborough a couple of years ago. Nick explained away that fight as good old-fashioned fisticuffs. For the record, this is good old-fashioned fisticuffs. This is a third of a ton of underworld rage scaring the f*** out of ordinary punters at the beach. We never did find out what that was about. No, one of the many things that Dane has declined to address in his tell-all. Why the beef with Nick and the Rebels? What did he do to get expelled from the Hells Angels? And what the f*** does he do for a living? (laughs) He buys bullion wholesale, says he's got three houses, has 350 grand worth of Harleys and 200k in gold hanging around his neck. Yeah, there's a few gaps in the story, but I guess we know more than we did originally. Yeah, the West will cop shit for running the piece regardless though. People will say the paper's glorifying gang life and all that, and I get it. But the more we know about what makes these guys tick, the better chance we have of stopping events like these. All bikies are missing something in their lives. Usually it's a brain. But I don't think that's the case with Dane. He's shown he's got a very good sense of humour. The t-shirt he wore after he featured in the Four Corners investigation into the Perth Mint was genuinely clever. He showed his funny side again when he beat the rap when the cops charged him with breaching gang insignia laws. Said the guy the police thought was him wasn't him because he didn't go for walks, he took steroids and went to the gym. He's obviously mentally disciplined. You don't get this big and this ripped regardless of steroids without a very strong work ethic. And most importantly, he says he's done one short stint in jail and that's it, minimum security at that, courtesy of too many late nights in Northbridge. Guys like him don't have short rap sheets unless they're pretty cluey. Prison isn't always a bad place to be. Not when you're happily pissed, as was the case recently at Dane's alma mater, (laughs) Wiraloo Prison Farm. Jail bosses there had stored tubs of hand sanitizer in an office. An eagle-eyed trio of prisoners saw them through a window back in late April and knowing it was almost pure alcohol, smashed their way into said office. I love it when a plan comes together. And started handing it around to other prisoners. Everyone got royally pissed, like wake up with a Mike Tyson (laughs) tattoo on your face kind of pissed. Prison bosses went into damage control. They told staff that 10 bottles had been pinched and to be on the lookout. The next day, they found 11, so someone had clearly miscounted. Honestly, it needs a Benny Hill soundtrack. It is a bit like that. One prisoner drank so much, he ended up in hospital overnight. The three guys that broke in had their minimum security status revoked and they were sent to Acacia, with what I imagine will be a hangover like the ones I'm about to endure because I'm going on a three-week break. I'm Ben Harvey, and I'll see you in July. Half your luck. (laughs) For more up late, click the subscribe button below.